Welcome back to the Fenrir Rescue Diaries and today we are back at one of the rescue centres that I volunteer my time at. We're going to be doing some temperament assessment, some behaviour modification and some training sessions with the dogs that are in today. And in this first session we are joined with a absolutely wonderful staffy. Now any of you that have been around for any amount of time will know that I absolutely love Staffordshire Terriers, one of my favourite breeds of all times and shelters up and down the country are littered with staffies and unfortunately this is no example. So this staffy that has been named Stella, beautiful girl but she was found um, abandoned just roaming the streets and uh, the police were called out and she's ended up here. So what we want to do today is essentially do a bit of a temperament assessment with her, see what it is that we're working with, see uh, what kind of home she would be suitable at being rehomed to. And then as always is the case, if I can do any work with them, tune them up, give them a better chance of success of being rehomed, then we're absolutely going to do that. So as you can see, she's, she's a chunky girl, but she's, um, she's a little bit dirty. She's definitely been roughing it for a little while, but not too long because she's still got a good amount of weight on. So she's been definitely been eating from somewhere. Straight away, what I'm starting to do in these sessions is just get a feel for her. Now, obviously, the very first thing that I can do when we do that is getting them out of the cage. Are they territorial in any way whatsoever? Are they resource guarding the, uh, the kennel that they're staying in whatsoever? How is their general demeanour, attitude, temperament, body language, communication? How are they with me getting a slip lead, which is always the tool that I start off with any dog with, because straight away I can start to communicate with a little bit of lead pressure and see how they respond to those things. And we can see straight away that we haven't got an aggressive dog here whatsoever. Like most staff is, she's very happy-go-lucky. Now, Barney's out in the other garden area getting some exercise today. We did a video with him last time we were here and we caught a beautiful moment where they kind of crossed paths. So I gave them an opportunity to sniff at each other. That very quickly told me that straight away we don't seem to have any dog-to-dog -dog aggression or dog-to-dog -dog reactivity problems, which again is wonderful for her. So what I would like to do now is kind of assess her drives, see if she's got any kind of obedience whatsoever, see if she's interested in food or toys. And one thing that I'm noticing just through talking to you is that we don't have any engagement. Now, my training philosophies, methodologies, principles, all revolves around leadership and getting the dog to know that they can look up to you for guidance and direction. That removes anxiety and fear. And then you can control the situation, ensure that they're happy, safe and under control no matter where you find yourself. Now, what I like to look for when I'm doing this, and then even when I was talking to you, I'm, I'm always subconsciously watching out for those things is just starting to get a feel for how is she engaging with me and right now she's not really engaging much she's very much doing her own thing and on a lead and she's happy to pull through it which is definitely something i would like to address so we're going to see if there's also any resource guarding and then i'm definitely going to do a bit of an engagement tune up with her start her working with me see what drives her and then i think that she's going to be another case of just a wonderful staffy that will be able to help find a wonderful home so first of all we're going to see if we've got any food drive so again, not engaged with me whatsoever, but if I can get her attention, I want to see if she's just interested in food. So interested, brilliant. Let's see if she'll take it. Excellent, brilliant. So she's interested in food, she'll take food off me. Um, so that's always really nice to know that we can reward her with food. Quite standard with staffies. Staffies are usually quite food driven. And then I want to see next, I'll go get a tennis ball and we'll see if there's any toy drive. So now we're going to do exactly the same principle. Yes, okay. And again, very similar with most staffies. She caught my finger there, so that might suggest that her eyesight's not brilliant. This offering a sit is wonderful, this is what I like to see. Good, yes. So wherever she's come from, whoever abandoned her has definitely done some kind of obedience training. Now this will be a wonderful opportunity for me to assess whether we have any resource guarding. Now this is always the most dangerous part of any temperament assessment. Um, straight away, the body posture is, is concerning to me and she's definitely chewing it. So what I'm not going to do is use my hands because that's a recipe to get bit. I'm going to start... So she wants to take it away from me, but we're not getting any grumbling behaviours. But she's definitely redirecting and avoiding. So she wants to take the toy away, which is understandable, especially we don't know where she's been from. But this is a really important part of any temperament assessment because it would be really easy because you saw how happy-go-lucky she was and the general demeanour was friendly. This dog goes into a home where there's children involved and they want to play with a tennis ball and you saw how excited she was 
with um, as soon as I got the tennis ball out and she wanted the tennis ball but then what happens if a child goes to take that tennis ball off them and we haven't assessed the situation so I always like to kind of put myself in that firing line first again it's one of them situations we could dance around this issue what I could probably very easily do right now is see whether so I can definitely bring her away if she wants to bring the toy with her this is a lovely example so obviously we can redirect it and distract her away from the tennis ball with food which would be a very common kind of approach especially a positive only approach so we bring her away and she's going to want the food and I can guarantee she's going to want to go back to that toy now that's all well and good But what happens when I claim it? Now, the difference is there was a break in separation and I've come in and claimed this toy now. What we need to find out is what happens here once she's now claimed it. Obviously, that wasn't ideal manners and we're definitely going to work on this because already you can see that my brain's ticking that we might have highlighted a potential problem here. And again, to give her the best chance. And again, we need to talk about this because this is really important. If this happens and it happens badly, and I get bit, I can deal with it, we can work on it, we can help her overcome that. If this happens with potentially another member of staff, if it happens with a family member, or God forbid a child, this 100% is going to be a dead dog, it'll instantly get put down. So yes, we can dance around the subject with luring it away from food, but at some point comes that we're going to have to see whether that resource garden's there and if it is i'm going to deal with it very very quickly and swiftly and see whether that just brings it back down and we can control it otherwise like i say it's just a recipe for euthanasia so what i'm doing is i'm going to start to shorten the lead now as you can see we're very loose but i have to be very careful and from my experience with these situations this is definitely not something that should be done by someone who isn't a trained professional in these situations so what is excellent is I'm now going to I'm going to stop letting her display any avoidance type behaviors. Again, that might seem as look she wants to go. I get that. That's okay. But we need to know and we need to address it if it's a problem. So I'm very much coming into her personal space here. And I'm starting to touch her. Now, I don't want her to avoid me here. And ideally I want her to let go of the toy because we've clearly got a lot of drive. So I'm putting no pressure on. I'm just literally, I'm just resting my foot up against the ball to see whether she redirects and pops. Because what I'm trying to do is imitate without me getting her, obviously where possible, is a child coming in and making an attempt for that ball. So imagine my foot is a child's hand going in to retrieve a toy that the dog has. Are we seeing any kind of aggressive redirection behavior? And the answer is, no, we're not. So this is a massive positive. Now, obviously, if we're gonna get that behavior, I'd rather it happen onto my boot rather than on my hand. And if I was to worry that it would be a problem for me to go in and take this ball, I would put my anti-bike gloves on. And again, we have to go through the process but it's always a slowly, slowly approach to see what it is that we're dealing with. So again, this is another kind of big disclaimer here because what I'm about to do is definitely not something that a uh, anyone that isn't a professional can do. I've got a lot of experience and skill and timing with being able to handle these situations. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come down to her level and I'm gonna make a claim for the ball whilst maintaining control with the slip lead. So should, and if it bad happen, I can really quickly regain control and keep myself safe as well as the camera operators and people that are here safe. So this is fascinating. We've just, just as I was about to do that, I've noticed that there's a little bit of blood on the tennis ball. That to me is suggesting that we might have some kind of tooth infection, gum infection, loose teeth, there's something happening in her mouth. Now is this, she's really going to town on this tennis ball. Is this to help relieve the pain in her mouth? Perhaps I'm 95% that's the case. And the fact that she allowed me to get so close to put my foot up against the ball, put my foot up against the side of her face and her body without redirecting, especially if she is in pain, is a really good sign. So it's very positive, but because she is clearly in pain, whatever's going on with making her so aggressively destroy this ball and there being a few blobs of blood on the ball is making my mind tick. So you've very much found ourselves in an interesting situation here. So again, 
I'm coming down to the level and you can see I've got ten I always talk about pressure and, and tension on a lead being so important. So even though I'm coming down to this level, yes, I've got this ready to control any variables, but it's still always loose. If I came in here now and put tension on the lead because I'm about to come in and make a claim for this ball, yes, good, yes, good. So I'm starting to build up that, um, the reinforcement of that you don't have to guard this ball. What I want to achieve from this is to take the ball, for her to allow me to do that, wait patiently, and then I'm gonna give her the ball back. If I can achieve that without there being any grumbling, teeth bearing, and he snaps at me, I'm very confident that we don't have resource guard in here, but this intense chewing type behavior is coming from there being an issue with her teeth or her gums, and we're gonna address that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start to stroke her. So again, especially on the flanks and on the side of her neck. <laughs> Terrier, all day. This, if, if there was any resource guarding, I'd start to notice that she'd get quite stiff. You, you saw me kind of pause for a second there, but it was just because she was she's pulling all the green off the ball and uh, yeah, very much being a terrier. So this is excellent that she's letting me now. Side of the neck, again, I've got my lead ready, should I need it. And we're seeing no change in her ears. Her body's still nice and loose, her tail's fine. What, what I'd be looking for here is stiffness, shoulders coming up, the, the little side glance that you get out of, so you get that like, and she goes very stiff. They're the things that I'm looking for here as I'm assessing this behavior. Now, again, if I was concerned about this, I'd put my bike gloves on, but I'm not, so I'm gonna come in. Again, no warning signs, which is excellent. She just seems to be having a right whale over time, and whatever it is that's causing her teeth to bleed a little bit, I just feel a bit sorry for. So she doesn't want me to have it, but she's not fighting me for it. Good girl. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Now what I don't want to do is really pull this just in case she has got any issues with her teeth. Um, and whatever's causing that blood, I don't want to make it any worse. But I also want to let her know that she can't necessarily be making the decisions it's always that balance about keeping her safe healthy and happy but instilling good leadership early on so you can see i've, I've now i've brought myself now into a very uh, strong position where i'm very much standing over the top of her and i'm praising her now normally if i didn't have concerns around the teeth or her gums i'd make a, a challenge for this ball and i would take the ball from her and really address whether she lets me do it because i am so concerned about whatever it is you can see it a little bit, whatever it is that's... So my mouth, my hand was in her mouth there, and we had definitely had um, bite inhibition, which is lovely. So this is wonderful. So I'm happy that there's no resource guard in there. Yes, I would like to take it a step further, but because I'm concerned about hurting her, um, and as much as yes, I'm a balanced behaviorist that believes in kind of, of leadership and, and pack dynamics. I also don't want to hurt a dog for no reason. Yes, thank you. Oh, good girl. Thank you. And she's being quite respectful and responsive of me being in such a kind of strong, uh, assertive position over the top of her. And I think what's happening here um, is just that something's hurting her and she's finding a lot of um, benefit from, from chewing on it. Uh, to relieve wherever the pain is. So absolutely, I'm gonna suggest that a vet sees her to check out her teeth and see whatever that is. Um, and then once she's finished destroying my brand new tennis ball that I get for her, we'll then start to work on some engagement stuff. But yeah, good start to the session. So here we are, so I made a claim for the ball and straight away we've gone back into lovely manners. So yeah, I thought that was actually, I love these sessions where it just kind of unfolds in front of your eyes, isn't that right, girl? So what you've just seen there is a very, very real, in the moment assessment of resource guarding. Now it might be quite easy for you to see how she is with this ball, and especially that she wants to tug. Now there's a difference between a terrier breed wanting to tug on something and play versus a dog that is resource guarding or displaying any negative behaviors. 
this isn't resource guarding it's just a, a terrier being a terrier so what i would do to help with this is i would just simply teach in a very positive fashion through a more positive reinforcement based approach of dog training would be a drop it command or a leave it command so that when she has got something that i would like her to stop chewing we have a really positive way of, of getting her to do that now if it was resource guarding i would then address that in a more balanced approach through a behavior modification and a behaviorist stance and that's why there's definitely two very different worlds between dog training and canine behavior and canine behavior modification but yeah that's how we do yes oh you're a good girl oh you're a good girl oh i'm falling in love with you you're a good fun you are good fun. But yeah, that's kind of how I go about doing some resource guarding. <laughs> oh, you want belly rubs? You want belly rubs? Oh, what a lovely way to end the video. So yeah, on the next video, with our staffy friend here, who, yeah, is an absolutely wonderful pooch, we're going to start building up some engagement. So I'm happy that there's no resource guarding, which is the most common cause of dogs getting put down in shelters. Um, I don't think we have to do any work on that. I want to get a vet to check out her teeth just so we can ensure that she's, she's all good from a health perspective. But um, now, and you'll see this on the next video, we're going to roll into being doing some engagement tune-up and start to get a nice heel walk going. So we'll see you on the next episode of the Femre Rescue Diaries. Oh.